Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, my name is Saiken and today we're going to continue our no short run where we're trying to beat the game on legendary Iron Man difficulty with nothing but melee attacks and psionics, so no single shot and no explosives and we got a pretty difficult mission ahead of us. Operation Black Pipe uh, will be limited to three soldiers only and this is an excellent excellent option to go through how to deal with a surgical side trip it's one of the most feared side trips we got a gatekeeper in here um we got elite officers heavy max elite priests so pretty pretty nasty stuff uh to go through uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, everything but a sector pot. So, for the holy moly, that is actually a really difficult mission. So we will need to have three strong soldiers, and I'll go over kind of a couple of uh, the um, of our best units. tips so that I would give out if playing through those missions. We're going to go in, like I said the last time, with a team, um, kind of a well-versed uh, team. And although Hogbite is a tiny bit injured, I think he will just do fine. Sonar here takes a Mimic Beacon because we will need that. And Zirkim will also take a Mimic Beacon because, like I said, we will probably need that. Both of them have a bond together, and that's really the setup uh, that we would uh, use for, uh, for that mission. We got the Blade of the Assassin and Hogbite pretty much needs nothing, he does not need any equipment. And uh, once we go into the mission I'll just talk through how I tend to do the surgical side trip missions and what kind of tips I can share with you. Alright, and we're in the mission. Let's talk a little bit about uh, side trip missions. So, side trip missions really, uh, uh, surgical side trip missions, really are a great way to test your skills in terms of how to deal with smaller teams. Smaller teams means less action, so generally I would like always to take classes that are um, theoretically possible, um, capable of doing like two actions. Pretty limited in this run, but great classes are Grenadiers with Salvo, so that they can lob a grenade and afterwards shoot. Um, great classes would be any uh, class that have a research uh, mechanism, death from above, uh, maybe uh, rapid fire um, or uh, ghost serial all of those uh, work and um, great class are also class that don't end their turn psi operatives with stasis are a fantastic option but of course also specialists one of my favorite class uh, for those missions and the trick is to be action efficient um, so often have i seen uh, kind of specialists play in um, in let's plays where People are not realizing that scanning protocol, revival protocol, um, the stabilize, and the healing as well as aid protocol all do not end your turn. So essentially not moving, but instead having like a great uh, position and then uh, using combat protocol as the second one, uh, shooting, which I can't do in this, uh, using haywire protocol or even a mimic beacon or whatever else you do have on the class really, really goes a long way. And then thirdly, you want to make sure that you have plenty of sustain. I brought uh, two Mimic Beacons and four Charges of Healing. And fourthly, you want to make sure that you're engaging properly. Engagement is uh, potentially the most important uh, part about those missions. I cannot stress enough just how important it is. Because if you are engaging into multiple uh, packs, that means almost for sure that you are going to uh, blow a lot of cooldowns and resource management is really, really important uh, with surgical uh, side trips. The path is clear. Which means I'm trying on this mission to... I see one of their patrols. Yeah, to not uh, needlessly engage somewhere else. We're immediately disengaging on this side because if the patrol runs into us, we want to make sure that we're not accidentally... Um, uh, triggering another pack over there. Instead, we're uh, getting well into position and then we'll be hopefully ready to deal with both of these guys here. Oh, 
All right, we don't want to attack the mutant. What we do want, though, is we want to kill the uh, codex and then essentially hopefully not uh, let the mutant run into us. The reason why that is we just came out of uh, stealth and when you're first discovered, the blade storm actually triggers uh, the retaliation from him. We don't want that uh, to happen, which is why I did not move right next to the mutant. But I uh, moved right next to the Codex because the Codex does not teleport away and it does not duplicate before the turn actually starts. Okay, so far so good. Mutant is sort of being uh, taken care of. We're continuing to move up. We're not attacking, but unfortunately I should have manipulated the movement pattern a bit better. That was sloppy. And it will cost us our first cooldowns. But will it? Will it really? Oh, this guy here cannot do anything at this point. And this is at best a mind control. So if I move out of um, out of line of sight. Hmm, difficult decision. Do I want to be greedy or not? I think we're going to give it a try. Worst th uh, thing that could happen is we're going to be uh, mind controlled. We're softening up the mutant. The uh, blade storm of Hogbite will do the rest and essentially kill it. Problem is, we're going to get, uh, we're going to definitely get one mind control blip, and the question is whether or not Sonar um, resists the mind control. Well, stasis is fine. Really, not that bad. It's all good. This here has the potential to trigger another pack, therefore I'm a bit careful. Potentially not careful enough. Potentially not careful enough. Alright, so... Let's start with this. Softening up the Andromedon, the guy here will die uh, due to Bladestorm. We are immune to mind control, so that's fine. I'm not parrying yet. No need to go in and uh, charge this guy. What we can do though is we can take a good position and let's just make sure that everything is in order. I'm going to use the first Mimic Beacon. There's really no need to take any risks here. I'm going to parry and the Andromedon should potentially move up. Stay sense. Uh, that's a pretty solid hit. Play storm kills. That's not going to damage uh, the mimic beacon, but it is triggering parry, which stings. And then there is one additional. Um, trooper. That's somewhere here. Yep, there we go. Luckily we missed. Which is good. Alright, cool.
Well, well, well. Shall we start? Yes, we shall, Saiken. Time to get the Andromedon down, I would say. Um. This guy here is a problem for Zirkim because Zirkim can be injured. Hawkbite down here really doesn't give a fuck. So it's not really a problem for him. I think this here is a reasonable position for Hawkbite. Starting but not killing. Zirkin begins to move up. I mean, we could kill the priest. One way of pl uh, to play this, I still wanted to keep it for a more difficult pack, but since we have two engaged, might as well want to go for it, to be honest. Hmm. We could take out the uh, Dromedon with Frostbite and just deal with the rest for now. Which would not be the worst idea, I suppose. Let's try to uh, let's try uh, try that. Saves us a mimic beacon and essentially some um, more valuable uh, cooldowns like advanced teamwork. Good. We're going to take a better position. I'm absolutely aware that we do have a couple of cooldowns. I don't want to use Combat Protocol yet. We're going to use that a bit later. So instead, let's just 8 Protocol to make him a less likely target for the uh, Purifier to attack. And we're simply parrying. Hawkbite is probably the target. Never mind. Alright, apparently the fire has prevented Zirkim from uh, blade storming. I was under the impression that that no longer is a case, uh, that fire prevents from melee attacking, but uh, clearly I was uh, wrong with that, so again, you learn. Zirkim took some damage, uh, nothing major, but nonetheless, let's move out of the fire, this might trigger a pack does not perfect uh, so first heal Healer mode. which also uh, gets rid of the uh, fire and we're looking to hopefully get a two for one kill nope sustenance unfortunately saves the day yet again fantastic just absolutely lovely Good. Now, believe it or not, is a decent time to combat protocol and just soften the sky up. That way, Hogbite can engage and my rage. can start to kill him uh, with uh, mm, with uh, Bladestorm. This is going to be a shot directly into uh, Hogbite. Or a melee attack. 
But that is fine as well. I didn't make it through. Thanks to Perry, that's not a problem. That would be another blade storm. And unfortunately we got another pack. Fun is just never stopping. Very good. We're almost done with the two packs that we have engaged first. Good, just out of curiosity. Hogbite can attack this guy here, theoretically speaking. And that would kill it, we would not take damage, and we would be okay. Let's try to do that. We're getting a little bit more focus. We we'll also move up, but that would ask for trouble. I'll move here because that is full cover at least against uh, the um, captain right there. Taking a single hit, Bladestorm will do the rest next turn. And I'm wondering. Do I want to waste the last Mimic Beacon? This guy will die. We could shut him down. And parry plus protocol should be good enough. So it's a greedy play that I'm trying. But it is one that if it works out, we'll save our Mimic Beacon. And we're also having advanced teamwork still ready to go. This year should just try to shut it down. Yeah, that some decent chance sometimes of course you lose and that's when things are not going your way we're not close enough so they he will take one target potentially hogbite here as hogbite is standing in the open like i said it was a greedy play Elarium Core, Superior Repeater, and uh, Alien Data Cache. That's not bad. Alright, so that's the parry. If we're absolutely lucky, he will decide to just use a rocket, and Hogbite is immune to that. Alright, that's not bad. Well, that's actually not bad at all. We're going to heal Zirkim. Got this guy here set up for success. And moving shortly to get full focus. Thank you. Before then. Starting to soften up the mech and stand side by side. This here should trigger double blade storm if the suit approaches. Plus, of course, double blade storm here. We're parrying. I think we're fine, we don't need the advanced teamwork yet. Healing is also okay. So let's just hunker down. I could have shifted over more actions, but we're, we're going to be fine. That's just going to be a shot to a hog bite into parry. Yep, nothing to worry about. This guy will definitely die.
And this here is two blade storms. Which sort of equals death as well. No longer a threat. Okay, I would absolutely love to use Ghost. Which sort of requires that this guy here can be killed without pulling another pack. Yep, that is definitely a kill option. And no other pack is being pulled. We're getting into half cover and I would like to summon the Ghost. There we go. Fantastic. Ghost loads up to three. And yeah, that is not so fantastic. Let's just wait with the ghost for now. There is another kill. Enemy down. And let's think about, we killed two up here, uh, then ran into two, that's four. Ran into another two, that's six. No, let, ran into another three, that's actually seven. Ran into another two, that is nine. Okay, cool. Well, four more to go, which is probably the gatekeeper pack. We're concealing. <laughs> And three sectoids, which coincidentally enough is exactly what we would be needing. Good. This here should be super stealth mode, not triggering anything. Double checked it. Wonderful. Worked like a charm. And the Templar Ghost does the same over here. Not triggering anything as well. We're moving a little oh, bit closer. So that the Mimic Beacon theoretically is a thing. And we're just going to end turn. Alright, let's do a really nice pull, shall we? Yes, we shall, Saiken. Good. This here should hit at least three of them with a blade storm. It's the typical blade storm trigger. Go in, hit the eyeball, ignore most of its armor, and those guys here are falling over like flies. <laughs> Fantastic. Good, we're moving in. The ghost is doing exactly what the ghost is supposed to do, which is move in and kill. Hogbite follows the example. The armor is tough. This will lead to two very beautiful uh, blade storm attacks. I don't want Zirkim to take any more damage. So instead of killing this guy, we're just going to deal with the sector. And leave the eyeball to the pro uh, pros right here. And for good measure, let's give him an aid protocol that puts him to full cover. All right, seven armor is a lot. Much 
Um, let's shortly move over here. We can always go back and kill this guy. But yeah, the gatekeeper should slowly but surely be worn down. It's really nothing. Hogbite could solo him by himself. Very good, and that should be it. Yeah. All hostiles are down, and the area is secure. Yeah, and that's really how to deal with the side trip. Uh, we got a little bit uh, carried away in the middle, but we had plenty of resource left over, more healing and uh, mimic beacons. So yeah, wouldn't I have been so greedy? I probably could have done it even flawless. Good, and I assume we're probably going to see Hogbite shaken again. But we really needed a strong team. Superior Repeater is nice, a lot of cores, and hey, look at that, 200 supplies, 50 crystals, 100 alloys, lots and lots and lots of corpses, specifically the sectoid corpses are fantastic, Gatekeeper, finally, um, Our research is progressing as expected, Commander. finally the one that we want to get, 7 days, this I'm probably not even going to upgrade Psy um, Amplifiers at this point, because with Once a Gatekeeper we would report, get the I'll maximum Psy Amplifier. Uh, let's see, do we have anything that we need? Nope. I don't know what I'm expecting when I'm looking uh, into into the facility. It's almost like, yeah, what could we get? Most of the things are irrelevant for us at that point. Good, we're waiting for more contacts and that's going to happen soon. Which probably means we're just going for more intel. We definitely got enough Illyrium and Alloys for whatever we want. Commander, we've located one of their facilities. Shocker, I know. Another facility. Uh, Eric Anderson has uh, recovered from his wounds. That's Hogbite. And Hogbite does not have any negative traits anymore. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, bond training, he can't do that either. Yeah, I was hoping that we... Uh, I, I was almost assuming that he still had negative traits. I wasn't hoping for that, but... I was assuming he had them. Okay. She is um, super good uh, rupturing the target uh, when you uh, place insanity on them. So that is indeed a good upgrade. Our... Psy operatives are almost like done with their entire training. Fantastic. Got a bond upgrade. The and we got nine extra dodge plus avatar progress reduction. That's exact, pretty much exactly what we want. So resistance contact, we don't need that, although promotion is good. Willpower, five dodge. Hmm. Promotion here is fantastic. Soldiers gain 20% extra XP, that is not bad. Lots of mobility. That one is good. That one is really good. Although, let's think about it. Um, it's a fantastic order. Well, it's a running Mimic Beacon, so why wouldn't we not do that? Breakthrough Research... Yeah, that's just a really, really, really good order. Uh, we don't need Aim. So really, we can put whomever on this mission. Judge here... Just wait a second. Judge wants to have a soldier bond with whom? With a grenadier torch. Uh, that looks like a good idea. Go ahead. I, uh, both of you will not be part of any important mission anyways. 
The reason why I'm still bonding them is, if I'm not mistaken, even bond rank number one should uh, give a reduction in days here if you um, if you put both of your bond uh, mates on it. So here we have torch, and here we have uh, judge. No, you need rank two. Too bad. Anyways, we don't pay until they can be theoretically. Um, injured I like it that's pretty decent order and we didn't have good resistance order so far don't worry, Commander. all right let's improve Roby and uh, Hogbite they certainly need their level 3 bond you've seen just how good it is to have a little level 3 bond and having those two with a level 3 bond would be fantastic. Sona already had one. Uh, Saiyan has one. So there are a couple of uh, level 3 bonds already in the doing. Those two certainly could benefit from it. And we got a new target. Make whole. Irrelevant. We... That is probably something that we should counter. Some of our swords deal fire damage. Ice um, is used from the um, ser serpent suit. So yeah, we, we, we want to counter that. Andromedon, shield bearer, general trooper, mutant. I don't know why that is considered difficult. That looks relatively light. Maybe the Berserker Queen is there, but then it would be very difficult. Yeah, seems about right, but still pretty comparably easy. So we're going to uh, do that mission. Anyways, that brings us to the end of today's episode. If you like the content, feel free to leave a comment and a like down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, there's always the opportunity to hit that little subscribe button and uh, give a little bit back. Uh, thanks and have a great one. Bye bye.